Good morning, this is Brook Trot Homestead and we are having a sprinkly day in Northeast Texas. I wanted to talk about our spaghetti squash today. started growing spaghetti squash I knew nothing and I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and I still didn't get exactly what I wanted to get from it so I wanted to help you guys out and do a video that kind of puts it simple and straight and makes it easy so what I did was our compost bin over here was full of just regular compost veggie scraps um, grasses from cutting the grass and whatever else you put in compost I made two piles. I made one over here and I made one over here. And the main reason I used that, it wasn't even all the way broken down, was because I wanted to empty it so I can get started on a new pile. So I figured, hey, why not? Let's try. And the spaghetti squash, I put three seeds, I believe, in this one and three seeds in this one. Um, I waited until I got two strong plants. So I had two here and two here that I left and they began to grow. Um, I don't know where you live, but here we have two bugs that love squash and um, love cucumbers. So there's the cucumber beetle and then there's the squash vine borer. And I had to deal with both of them with all four plants, but um, thankfully it's still surviving. And some tips, the way we did that was um, I picked, I came out here every morning I hand pollinated the female to the male flowers. I like to hand pollinate my squash to make sure that I'm getting the best production I can. Um, I picked off the squash vine borer eggs off of the stem. I sprayed neem oil. Make sure it's a cold pressed organic neem oil because not all of them being sold are the proper ones. Um, I also, for the cucumber beetles, I kind of just took them out the flower and I squished them. It sounds gross, but when you're trying to save your squash, you'll do anything. So if you can look down here, we have already um, picked, I think, four squash. Uh, this one is obviously not ready. What you're looking for in spaghetti squash is for it to be completely yellow, more like a dark yellow. And you want the stem right here of the squash to be brown. This is obviously still green. And over here, you can see a small one. So you want the stem to be brown and you want the squash to be yellow. But the way I pick my spaghetti squash, I don't necessarily grow spaghetti squash to do the spaghetti noodle thing. <laughs> my family's not huge on the whole pasta thing. So what I do is we like stir fries. We like soups and stews and different things like that. So I pick them as soon as they turn yellow, a nice little pale yellow, and the stem is still a little bit green. I pick them, I put them inside, let them sit for about three days, and then I cut them up, take the seeds out, and I cook them. I cook them like I would a yellow squash. They are still edible in this green state. It's just harder to cut through, and you're gonna have to cook it a little longer. That's why I wait until they're yellow. If you want the spaghetti squash cut in half, you know, uh, peel the noodles when you bake it, you have to wait and let it sit. Let the stem get brown and let it get completely yellow. But if you don't, they are still completely edible at green. And if it's the end of your growing, growing season and you have six spaghetti squash still on the vine that are not yellow, that's okay. You can cook them. They are edible. You will not get sick. Uh, you just won't be able to harden them off the way you would if you waited until the stem was brown. That's another thing. The shelf life of the spaghetti squash does not last through the winter, does not last long if you don't wait until it's fully ripe. So if you pick it green, you're going to have to eat it within the month or so. You can't wait until it hardens off. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is the vines. Okay, so let's say a vine borer takes over your vine. This vine is a work of the vine borer. See how it's nasty. See that this stuff coming out. 
Okay, so this one is way too far gone. But if I would have caught it earlier, what I would have done was I would have gone to one of these right here. I would have cut this off because this is just going to be another runner. And I will bury, oh, I did it here. Yeah. I will bury it in a compost, uh, manure mixture, or I even know people who do just plain dirt and mud and then just put it right on here. What this is gonna do, this is gonna let your vine grow roots. And once it grows roots, this this system is will be okay. So if this all dies off, you will still have this system here that is still healthy because it's th surviving through the roots that you just created. And before it got, cause the vine borers got my plants over here. This was all covered, but the vine borer got it. So what I ended up doing was just a bunch of root systems throughout the plants. And honestly, it saved my plant and I still have things growing. So I highly recommend looking into that. I do know people who will cut the vine open, take the borer out and then add dirt to it. You can do that too, but I just preferred to just cut the vine. I don't, I'm not the type of person that's gonna just break it open and get bugs out. I, it's just too much for me. So I just buried it, cut a vine and buried it. Right now I'm gonna talk about trellising. As you can see, I did not trellis my squash. I attempted to do a little half job. So you see this one here, and you see this here, and I added this here. Um, it did what it was supposed to do, but obviously not enough. Next year, what we're planning on doing is continuing the mound system that I got going on, but we may just do two T-posts a cattle panel, cattle panel on top, and then another two T-posts. So that when I grow my squash, they'll climb up one side, lay out the top, and then go down the other side. Not only is it a space saver, but you don't have to worry too much about disease, bugs, and having to deal with your squash sitting on the ground. Because we have a lot of mulch, so we don't have to worry about mushy sides of squash and molding too much but even on the mulch if it gets too wet in one certain area and your squash sits there uh, the odds of it getting mushy or bugs being able to burrow through it are pretty high so if you have the space to let everything crawl out and have a good mulch system I highly recommend um, doing that if that's what you want but if you don't have the space, if you don't wanna to have to worry about checking your squash every single day, making sure, or even if you go to my squash down there, I have a flagstone under it. All of my squash have flagstone under it right now, just to make sure, because it's been rainy the last three days, just to make sure that they don't get mushy. So highly recommend the trellis if that's your thing, if you want to avoid all the little situations or highly recommend letting it crawl out if you have the space, if you have the mulch. Um, it's really up to you. I hope this video was helpful. Um, like I said, squash are very heavy feeders, just like pumpkins and watermelons and things like that. So make sure you're doing your top dressing of compost, uh, compost tea, uh, fish fertilizer, whatever you have on hand bone meal, just top dress it, make sure that your squash are being fed because if you're not feeding your squash, they're not gonna taste good <laughs> and they're not gonna be fully developed. So thank you so much for watching. I hope I helped. Um, you have a great day, God bless you.